Over the years, we have seen and covered the evolution of 3D printer controllers. What was once fairly generic is now often built for a firmware's requirements or a certain footprint to make for easier swapping. However, it is just recently that I'm starting to see boards built for a specific printer. One of these is the Fisec Catalyst, a board made from the ground up for the Voron Zero. Creating a controller for a printer model does limit it from being adopted as widely as, say, a more general board, but it does allow for some unique design freedoms. Fisec sent out their Catalyst board for testing, and today we're going to be swapping it into one of my V0s. In this video, we will go over the specs of the Catalyst, what the installation process is like, and I will give you my overall thoughts on this controller. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. Let's start by looking at the Catalyst board itself and covering the technical specs. With the Voron Zero primarily running with Clipper firmware, the Catalyst has both the MCU and SOC for Clipper host built in. The SOC, called the CM68 Core, is running the Rockchip 3568, a quad-core Cortex A55 with 2GB of LBDDR4 memory and 32GB in the EMMC module for Clipper host and file storage. The MCU is an STM32F401. I didn't see it listed anywhere on the product page, but the Catalyst came pre-flashed with both Clipper and Clipper host. There are four stepper motor driver slots for step sticks that are labeled with large letters for A, B, Z, and extruder motors. These are placed in corners of the board that put them closest to where the motor is mounted to minimize the length of wire needed. Rattling off connections, we have NeoPixels, a dedicated CAN bus port with built-in transceiver, probe, four IO ports that can be used for things like limit switches and filament runout, 24 volt fan, power in, power out for the 24 volt DC bed, two thermistors, DSI, and V0 simple display port. There's also a micro SD card port and six small buttons for things like resetting the MCU or SOC. On the Clipper host side, you get Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, and one USB 3.0. If you're planning on running over Wi-Fi, you will need to use one of those USB ports for a Wi-Fi adapter since the board does not have onboard wireless. The good news is that Vicec does include a USB dongle, which is a definite plus, so you don't need to source your own or run the risk of any compatibility issues. There actually aren't that many connections on this board compared to many other modern controllers, which is because there is a umbilical connection on the top of this board, which allows you to connect the catalyst to a tool head board. The two boards are connected through an included pre-crimp 16 wire cable harness and give you the rest of the I.O. needed for the Voron Zero. This includes heater and thermistor, hot end and two layer cooling fan, extruder motor and optional end stop. It also has a built in ADXL accelerometer for input shaping. There are a few things I find odd about this setup. Currently, Fisec sells the Catalyst in three configurations the main board only, the main board and TMC2209 drivers, and the main board drivers tool head board and V0 display. I was sent the full kit minus any stepper drivers. From what I can tell at least, there is no obvious way to tap into any of the connectors on the tool head board from other places on the main controller. This means that the tool head board is a requirement to be able to run this on the V0, which is what this entire thing is made for. Perhaps they have that as an option for those that want to jump straight into running CAN bus, but I still find it very weird to include the main board without that tool head board. I actually wish they had gone without the umbilical cord altogether and had just gone with a CAN bus port on the top and an included CAN bus port. That might just be a personal preference thing, but I would much rather have just four wires running from the board on the back to the tool head board versus 16 wires. There's also not any RGB hookups on the tool head board, which is something that I find really odd. The Mini Stealth Burner is the official tool head for the Voron 0.2, and it has built-in spots for LEDs. It is optional, but to not have that just seems like a missed opportunity. 
Lastly, I don't know if it was just forgotten in the package that I was sent or if this is how it comes, but there were no connectors or pins for that tool head board. All those connectors take JSTPH, which I didn't have any of here. Luckily, my buddy Tom was able to loan me his container of them, but at a bare minimum, this is something that should be included with this kit. For installation, my plan was to put the catalyst into my LDO Voron 0.1. This would allow me to clean up the wiring by going from two boards to one, getting rid of the large buck converter, and freeing up the Raspberry Pi for other projects. I hadn't planned on doing any other upgrades, but installing the catalyst with the tool head board, the V0 simple display, and swapping out the X extrusion for the CNC version that Fisac also sent over. This plan just about immediately went out the window. As I tried to place the little board on the back of the extruder stepper, I discovered that it was made specifically for the V0.2 X carriage. The V0.2 has two extra mounting points on the bottom, and it's raised up a bit higher to keep the board from crashing into the AB motor mounts. So off I went to print out the new X carriage and swap out the mini afterburner for the mini stealth burner. While that was printing, I noticed my belts were quite worn, and I also wasn't happy with some of the motion system parts, so I ended up swapping out the front idlers, XY joints, and AB motors all to the V0.2 versions. I also realized that the mount I'd printed for the V0 simple display was too tall for the stock V0.1 skirts, so I upgraded all the skirts and feet also to the V0.2. The only thing really that's still on the V0.1 version is the Z-axis. It still homes to minimum versus maximum. I didn't swap out those parts. Some of this is definitely overkill, but at a bare minimum, you have to swap out the X carriage for the V0.2 version, and you need to go with the mini stealth burner, something that was not clear to me from the beginning. There are mounts available in the GitHub for the Catalyst that I printed out and VHB to the back panel, along with a new top cover between the AB motors. This cover has an opening for the umbilical port and umbilical cables, which looks really nice. There's also an optional tool head board cover that you can print out. I did and I found it to be a bit bulky. Also, my wires didn't go neatly through the sides of it like it's intended, so I decided to go without. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the wiring and I do think it looks much cleaner than how I had things before. Next was time to configure everything, which was another huge gap in the current experience. As mentioned earlier, Clipper and Clipper Host come pre-flashed, which is great, but in general, documentation is lacking. Instead of having all the documentation in the Catalyst repository, I found it was scattered between there, the Fisec V0.2 R1 Pro repository, and the Fisec Discord. To configure Wi-Fi, I had to hook up the printer through Ethernet and SSH into the board. The instructions for this I found in the R1 repository. What I did not find was any info on the SSH credentials. This I found by keywording in the Fisec Discord. Both the username and password are set to Lenaro in all lowercase. Next was time to follow the Wi-Fi steps, which was another big headache. The instructions have you enter sudo if config to make sure that the board sees the Wi-Fi module and that it is displayed as up or running. Then it has you enter sudo space Wi-Fi underscore STA underscore start dot SH space followed by your network SSID space followed by your network password, then hit enter. However, my usual network password starts with an exclamation point, which caused a shell error. There appeared to be no way around this, which was already not a great user experience, but with my Wi-Fi network, it's very easy for me to create additional guest networks, so I made one specific for this board and this printer. I entered the command again with the new credentials and then ran sudo if config, where I was able to see the IP address that had been assigned to my board and connected to mainsail. What I then realized shortly after was that any time I power cycled this machine, it was not able to connect back onto my wireless network. I tried a handful of different things while troubleshooting and still had no luck. The workflow I had to go through was plugging this in over ethernet, SSHing into it over ethernet, applying those Wi-Fi credentials, then unplugging ethernet every single time. I then reached out in the Fisec Discord and saw another user that was having the exact same issue I was. This appears to depend on which firmware version is flashed to the board, and for some, running that Wi-Fi start sh command works and it will retain the info, and for others, like myself and the other user that I saw, it does not. Pnoob from the Fisec server had me enter sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash network forward slash interfaces, which opens a network file that had a pre-filled network SSID and password. I swapped these out for the credentials on the network that I had created, then hit Control x to exit and Y to save. 
And that ended up being the solution, which was a huge relief. I've power cycled this thing 10 to 20 times now, and every single time it connects right away and very quickly. I was told for now that you should try the first method of using the pseudo Wi-Fi STA start. And if that doesn't work, then you can use the backup method, which worked for me. Next came time to set things in the printer.cfg, and there was one that came pre-installed from the factory. I had assumed this was to make the upgrade quicker, but mine had tons of issues. It did have the correct serial ID, which was nice, but all the fans were commented out, and there was a whole part of the config that appeared to be for dev testing that was not removed, which caused errors due to pin definitions being used more than once. I'll give them some slack as part of the issue is that I was converting the LDO kit, which had some different parameters for things like motors, and I did keep the old Z axis, which homes at min instead of max, but this was still a very broken config. There is a config available in the Catalyst repository that I've looked through, which I recommend replacing with the pre-installed one. You'll want to keep your serial ID, but the main issues I had with the one included seem to have been corrected, which is at least good to see. Overall, documentation needs some serious work and is by far my biggest complaint with the entire experience. SSH credentials, the correct wireless instructions, wiring and pinouts and flashing at a bare minimum need to all be in one place. Two repositories and a Discord server is a recipe for a frustrating experience, which I firsthand witnessed. Hopefully the info in this video will help others from spending quite as much time as I did just trying to figure out how to get everything set up. From a hardware standpoint, the Catalyst is a nice board and I do think there will at least be some demand for it. Out of the current configurations, the base board is $93 and the full bundle is $120. Compared to say the Big Tree Tech Manta M4P or the Fly Gemini V3, this is 20 to 25% more expensive. I do understand that it is a custom board, but I'm having a really hard time recommending it over some of those other options. What I would love to see is the documentation get cleaned up a bit to provide for a better user experience and for that top bundle tier to come down in price at least a little bit. Currently, this board makes a lot of sense for FISAC to offer with their V0.2 Pro R1 bundle. It gives them a custom solution, they can pre-configure it, and it looks clean. However, it makes a lot less sense as an upgrade option unless you assign a lot of value to the footprint and placement of this board on the back of the printer. And that has been the FISEC Catalyst. For a board that was built for the V0 specifically, this was much more of an adventure than I had initially anticipated. Now that it's done, it's working very well, but the process of getting here was just too involved. With this being a fairly new board, I'm hoping that Fisec can get the details of this cleaned up, and if they're even able to just adjust pricing a little bit, it will make it a much more competitive offer. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this board. I hope that I was able to answer the majority of your questions, but if you do have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't have the answer for your question, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get that answer for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.